I appreciate the breakfast, Yoda, but uh, why do I have two slices of bacon and you have three? Because I eat more calories than you do. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we have pancakes and bacon, you'll be alerted to it. Pancakes on BBBE and Keto Chow. That's right. How did we accomplish this? It's super high protein pancakes. You know, I feel like we need to switch up the intro. Okay. Because, um... You don't have any time to sneak in a bite? I don't have time to sneak in a bite. I do more talking during the intro. I feel like we need to switch this up. You should learn my intro. In life, I will have more talking. Okay. In our intro, you have more talking. So, by the way, the bacon thing, it's got it really good. nothing to do with me having more calories. We've talked about this before. A lot of times to um, make things even, we usually have the same amount of food on our plate, and then I usually eat an extra meal... Or Some other time. eat something else later on so that I don't rub in Rachel's face that I, as a man, need, more need fuel. to consume more fat and more protein. I don't want to weigh 150 pounds. I want to weigh between 180 and 190 pounds. Therefore, I should be eating more than you. If you ate as much as I eat, then you would weigh between 180 and 190 pounds. It only took... 45 years to get that in my noggin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that, that just a little bit of time for so, me to get it. So, uh, quick intro today because we're running behind and Keto on the Couch is in 15 minutes. If you're curious why I am I wearing a Yoda hat? Yes. It's cold. Baby, it's cold it's, outside. It's 39 degrees outside. As Where a matter are we? Of fact, my friend who lives about 30 minutes north of us sent me a picture. There was ice on his windshield. What, what, what are we doing? Ice on his windshield. And he's from Michigan and he doesn't have an ice scraper anymore. So he was using a rubber spatula to clean the ice doing anything? off of the windshield. Well, it's Florida. So at least he didn't pour hot water on the windshield. Like some people that I know. Who would do that? Okay. Back to the pancakes. So here's what these pancakes are. They are a scoop of, do you know what flavor? Mm. The flavor doesn't come through because there's no extract, but I'm curious if you can pick it I up. I want to say banana. You got it. Banana. I did, seriously? Yep. Scoop of banana. Wow. Chow. Now, this would work with any of the sweet flavors. Honestly, it would work with even the savory flavors. Um, it would probably work with the chicken. I don't know about the other ones because the other ones are beef-based, not milk protein-based. But, so it's a scoop of keto chow, uh -huh. two eggs, um, about a third of a cup of water until you get to the right consistency and one tablespoon of butter all mixed no up in the Vitamix and then poured on there. So different than our fluffy cheesecakes, which use, uh, cream cheese. Mm -hmm. We can't have cream cheese on beef, butter, bacon, egg, and we can but it does give it. Now I thinned it out probably a little bit too much with water. So the less Ooh, water you like put, it. the thicker they're going to be. I like these. It's almost like a crepe. Now, if you're not doing beef butter, bacon, and egg, you could actually add a little bit of a baking powder to get them a little bit more fluffy. Um, They're perfect. What's your thoughts on the espresso over there real quick? Really good. I feel like it's um, very rich and full. Did you like... Find a way to pack more in. So, yeah, this is a refill pod. Now, if you didn't see it, we did a video on the Nespresso and different ways to refill. For and a day. I'm going to give a quick amendment to that. So, I did find this little doohickey, okay? <laughs> and you can buy it several different ways. I'm going to leave a link for all three of them down for below. for a sink or something? So, they have one where it's a whole kit and it comes with foil lids, but I already had the foil lids. Mm-hmm. So then you can also buy it individual. So, you know, remember the little bamboo cup thing we had? Yeah. Well, this serves the same thing where you put your little cup in here. Maybe we'll show this later on. Okay. And you put it in there and then this goes on top and it acts like a funnel so that you're not Getting pouring it all over, it the, all over the rim. Like and that. then what happens is, is after you're all done, you take off the funnel 
and then it's got this little tamper, which has a little bit of weight to it. That's nice. And you give it a nice little tamp, not super hard, but a nice little tamp. It presses it down, mm. so it's it's more like an espresso. And then you put your foil lid on, and it works with the other foil lids that we had already. I really like it keeping everything and, clean. I mean, this is the third time that I have made one with it. It gives the nice crema. Very We've nice. We've learned that now that that foam is called crema. Thanks, Matreya. And, or crema, right? Crema right. Crema or crema. Crema, right? Whatever it is, we're pronouncing it wrong. I'm sure. I know that. And yeah, so I really like it. Now, are we going to still buy espresso pods or Nespresso pods? Yeah. Yeah, but it's nice knowing... You got a backup system. You have a backup system. Hey, I'm out of pods. I have to order them. Or also maybe somebody gives you with, you know, some expensive espresso grounds and you want to be able to do Cherish it. Cherish it. Once you've opened up your first pod, and that's what we, we're, we're just reusing old pods. That's what we're doing. We're not going with the metal ones. I don't think they were right. I think there's also something about the shape. Somebody actually pointed that out in one of the comments too, that it, one of the things that may help is that it's not rounded yeah, shape, Yeah, right? it's not identical. It allows, so when you're using, you know, it allows like airflow and circulation as it's brewing. And I think that that's got something to do with it. And Probably. so... I like it, but once you've... Not for nothing. I like it that way. But once you've peeled off that lid, after that, it's super easy. Like yeah. Because the, the replacement lids come off nice and easy. And Especially, you just rinse them out and have them. I really like the stickers. I call them stickers. The aluminum lids that are bigger than what you need. You yeah. need to have those yeah. ones that are like a little bit bigger. You want it to fold over more forgiving. just enough to kind of grab on, but without covering the barcode. Mm -hmm. But now it, it takes like 10 seconds to do it. And it's nice because now it's costing me like 20 cents a cup as opposed to a dollar twenty five a cup. And like I said, we're still going to use an espresso pods. But they have a lot of limited edition flavors, and we get hooked on one, like that Puerto Rico one. Oh, yeah. It's no longer available now. I know. What is this, Aldi? You know Rachel is feeling better when she's cleaning. I know, and I have to move every, like the sofas, everything out of the way. Of course, look at this. This is the culprit right here <laughs> uh, at the source of all hair. If you get a Labrador because you're thinking, oh, this is a short haired dog. So there's like basically no grooming. Yeah, you don't have a lot of grooming, but this thing is dumping hair yeah, like all day long. Two to three times a year, every it's day. just like a nest of hair yeah, everywhere. everywhere. You just never have to really groom them. You can brush them, but they're still gonna drop hair. You don't have she's to just take her to places. Yeah. Yeah, like she's going to she's gonna dry off really quickly. Like she will go in the lake or she'll go in the pool. And then like shake off and be pretty dry pretty quickly. And she doesn't get cold very easily. But I mean, it is hair everywhere, everywhere. So I need to go to the chiropractor. I have my second of three appointments that we already paid for. We group on this. On. It's happening. After that, like we're not doing that. We're doing physical therapy on our own. And then if we need it. We'll find a physical we're, therapist. We're going to DIY your neck? I'm DIY. Well, here's the thing. I've already been following the suggestions of so many of you guys. Thank you. Where I bought like this little brace thing that you put underneath your neck and it basically makes your head go back. It's kind of painful. Yeah. Um, but you kind of just lay flat on that for like 15 minutes a day. And then I bought a new contour pillow and I've been sleeping with the thing under my knees and it's making Honestly, you farty, though. It, is that, it, like, air getting trapped I or don't something? Know. It's, like, weird. But I will say, in the three days that we've been using that... Feel good? I have not had my arm go numb once overnight. So wow. So, something about it, the neck. So, we're going we're gonna to try to fix this on our own without paying a chiropractor $3,000. Give me some duct tape. We're going to fix this. So, we have a saying in our house. When there's something you want to discuss, maybe some juicy things... You know, generally you would say to somebody, you know, hey, you might want to be sitting down for this one. Yeah. The saying in our house is grab a glass, grab a glass of, wine. of wine. And right? you know, which we don't even drink, but it's like I guess we've seen it in so many like lifetime television for women, like t things like let's have a glass of wine and, and chat because I cannot believe what I just saw. And so that's a saying. So the kids will come home and like you might want to get a glass of wine. Right. It, it, it's not literally go get a glass of wine. No. It, it means. Be prepared. This one is this. good, right? So grab a glass of wine. Seriously. So I go to the chiropractor and You're early. she told me my appointment was 4 p.m. So I get there at 4 p.m. I am I never like being late. So I literally walk in like four minutes to five or five minutes to four. 
And I walk in and I did think it was odd. There's nobody in the office. Ghost town. So I just sit down in the chair and I hear the doctor and I'm assuming, because I can't see, the office staff. I hear at least two other people in the doctor's office, like in his private office, which is right next to where I'm sitting. And I can't help but listen to what they're talking about. And again, I think it's odd that nobody's here to greet me. They should have locked the front and, door. And I'm like, okay, this is odd. I know she told me four o'clock and it's, it's now, it's about 10 after four and I'm listening. And I hear the doctor actually say to his office staff, your job is to get more money out of the patients. Mm. These one-time visits should be rolled into multiple visits. And then I actually hear them say, for example, let's take this Joseph. He came in on a Groupon. Which you did. We can easily turn this into a $2,500 what? deal. What? Yes. How did you not explode? You Because I still got another free visit or another visit that's oh, paid honey, for. I'm going to get my free visit. Don't oh, you worry. Yes. And I am a very like subdued person. But if I just heard you... Talking about how you were going to dupe me? Yes. Honey, you need to know that. Like, when they came out of that office, I'd be like, oh, really? And I hear him continue to say, every person who comes in here on a Groupon, we can find something on their x-rays that should mean we can get multiple visits, like 15, 20 visits out of How them. did you not explain? And basically that? starts reprimanding them, like, do your job. Your job is to get more money out of these people. So now what are you thinking? Because you know they're about to hard sell you, right? My My thinking is, is you've just confirmed what I've always felt about many, not all, but many you're chiropractors. Give, you're giving chiropractors and that a bad is, name. they're quacks trying to get a bunch of money and get you to keep coming back. And I'm not saying every chiropractor, but my personal experience- This was a bad run. With every chiropractor I've ever been to is- you need to come back over and over and over and over and over again for the rest of your life. And we know that this is not true. We yeah. know that there are absolutely awesome yeah. chiropractors of integrity. Yeah. But not this that, guy. Not this one. Not this guy. So now he starts treating me and I'm the first appointment of the day. So he starts treating me and he goes, hey, have I gone over your x-ray in detail with you? And I'm like, no. And he's like, okay, so after your treatment, because I've got to do the adjustment and then the, the decompression and then the hydro massage table. He's like, then I'm going to pull you in my office and I'm going to go over in detail with you on, you know, your x-rays. I'm like, okay, great. And you're like, now, and now you're going to be the warranty guy. I'm on the machine thing in another room and I hear him say to the secretary, when I pull Joseph in, make sure you come in so we can talk to him about the finances aspect of this. I feel like- So now I know I'm being set up. You, like this is the hard sale when you go to buy a car and they put you in the glass booth. You can't even enjoy the the massaging no. going on because you and know it's I, coming. Believe it or not, I don't like confrontation. You I didn't really, think that. I, I can be, I like confrontation when you ask me to be confrontational with you. Like if you come to us and say, I want you to coach you, I'm gonna say, I expect you to do this, this, and I want you to agree to this, this, this. You can hold and when accountable. you don't, I'm going to hold you accountable. Say, do you remember when you told me you were not gonna eat an hour before you go to sleep and you were gonna allow at least 12 to 14 hours before your next meal after your last meal of the day? Well, are you doing that, right? I can be confrontational there, but and in something like this, I don't really want that confrontation. I feel so like now I'm already, yeah, like you said, I'm on the hydro massage table going, I'm about to have a confrontation. So they pull me in uh -huh. and then he says, okay. And he's like, well, have a seat. The doctor's going to come in. And I say, listen, my appointment was four o'clock. You didn't pull me in until like 20 after I'm four. An appointment. And I have a coaching call at five o'clock. It takes me 10 minutes to get home. And so that means you have five minutes. And so the guy's like, well, that's just not enough time. I'm like, yeah, not enough time for a hard sell, right? I was gonna <laughs> and so I'm like, listen, no here's time. the deal. I've got one more visit that I've already paid for through the Groupon. So why don't we discuss this after my next visit, yeah. which is Thursday. Now I'm going to have the excuse to walk out and like, 
I'm gonna have to figure this one out. Although Rachel wants me to go in. Hey, by the way, you remember your conversation on Monday? I heard it. I brought you in some brochures for door locks, because you need to put one on the front door before you have a meeting. Yeah. And also some of these sound panels, because they can really absorb the sound because we can hear you if as customers. If you are going to have a conversation about how you need to rip off your customers or patients. Do it after hours. Maybe either do it after hours when the last patient's left or lock the front door so the patient can't walk in and you don't know they're there. I feel like here's the the more you know star. Dun 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 dun. We got mail. We got mail. What'd you get? My Cincy. This is like the smallest box I've ever gotten. Well, that's just our every other month order. You can pick certain scents to you know, like have them ship them to you every other month and it guarantees that you're going to get them even if they discontinue them, you still will continue to get them. So what does our house smell like? Our house smells like lemon sorbet. I love that smell. It smells like candy crave. My car. It smells like coconut lemongrass. I also smell like cocoa lime. True love always. And oh boy, this is Joe's favorite scent. I love that. Yes, which is like no. I like the I like the the uh, like limes. Too. Yeah. Well, this is kind of orangey, which is why you like them. So yeah, we will continue not to stink. So today we're gonna cook some New York strips, and we're gonna make them in the sous vide. But we're gonna do this a little bit different. Normally we cook them in the Anova Precision oven, or we use our Anova immersion sous vide machine, which is basically a stick that you're gonna stick into water. What we want to do is find out, is there a difference? Can you tell the difference between using the standard immersion sous vide and the Anova Precision oven? So here's what we're going to do. I've got this one here going and we've got it set to 128 degrees. The water temperature is currently 77 degrees. We're going to bring that up to 128. Now over here, we have the Anova Precision oven and this one is currently preheating. We've got it set for 128 degrees with 100% humidity, and we're going to set the probe to 128 degrees. Now, this is supposed to be just like a sous vide, but we don't need a bat. So what we're going to do is at the same exact time, once everything is up to temperature, we're going to take one of these steaks, we're going to put it in a silicone bag, we're going to cook it in there, and then we're going to also cook in one in here and set it at the 128 degrees. Now, one of the things about a sous vide is you can't overcook it. So we shouldn't be able to overcook it in the Anova oven if we keep the humidity at 100% and we keep it set at 128 degrees and we let that go at 128 degrees. And we're gonna cook these for an hour. And then afterwards, we're gonna pull them out, we're gonna pat them dry and we're gonna sear them. And then we're gonna taste test which one is better or can you even tell a difference? The sous vide is getting ready. I am so excited about that. And we got rid of the egg tilt-a-whirl yep. carnival ride. And we got instead something that reminds me of like the temptations yep. from QVC. And this Except is- Except for this was really cheap. This is like an egg holder that we got on Amazon, but doesn't it remind you of temptations? So we got rid of that tilt-a-whirl and we got this and look, it holds a lot of eggs. It does. And what's cool about it is you can, I'm not that I'm doing this, but you could take this off and then it's really designed to carry this out to your backyard and collect, them. And collect the eggs. But since we only get, you know, between three to five a day, we don't need a cry. I just put them in my like pocket, my hoodie pocket or something. But look, we're getting a nice colorful assortment in here now. It looks like Easter. And it's kind of cool is you just have this little thing and it sits on the counter and it completely disgusts Caleb because he was like, why are we keeping eggs on the counter and not putting them in the refrigerator? When you put this chicken in the refrigerator, it's like chickens don't go in the refrigerator. I'll leave this, I'll link for this down below in Amazon, but it was like it's 20 just, bucks. It's super like, cute. Is that not really cool? And it, you feature your eggs. This is what the And it's got did. a cool chicken on top. So we've got the Innova Immersion Blender. It's up to 124 degrees. We're going to 128, but we're close enough. We're gonna go ahead and get the steak in there. So this is the steak. I have it in a silicone bag. Again, we don't like to cook in a regular plastic. I'd much prefer to use silicone. I'll leave a link for these down below. Super easy to wash. All you gotta do is turn it inside out and then you can wash it either by hand or even stick it in the dishwasher. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put this in here. I've got a little rack and we're gonna make sure it's completely submerged. 
and we're gonna set a timer over there for an hour. So Alexa, set a timer for one hour. So over here we have the Innova Precision Oven. We've got it, it's at 128.9 degrees, 100% humidity. We're gonna go ahead and stick this in here. We've got the probe in the middle of the steak and we're gonna plug in the probe and we're gonna allow this to cook for the same hour. And then what we're gonna do is when this gets to 128 degrees, this one and that one should both be at the same temperature, but we're gonna not stop that until this one reads 128 degrees on the probe. So I wanted to show you guys something. I just made one of Maria Emmerich's protein sparing bread using my whisk in my KitchenAid. Now this is the KitchenAid Pro 600. It's the lift one, it's not the tilt one. And one of the things I was noticing is my whisk was no longer hitting the sides and I was having to stop it and go in and scrape down the sides. Well, there is a way to adjust it where you may not need a new whisk. Now my whisk is a little bent, but I actually wanted to show you how you can adjust your stand mixture if you have the lift one. Now there's a separate way to do this if you have the, the tilting one, but I don't have a tilting one, so I really can't show you that. So here's what I wanted to show you. So if you come in here, what you wanna do is put on your beater attachment and we're gonna put a dime in the bottom of the bowl and we're gonna check on what's called the dime test. So we're gonna lift up our bowl and we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And you can see the beater is not touching the dime. That means that our bowl is not adjusted properly. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this off. We're gonna drop the bowl. Now what you should do is unplug it, but I don't wanna move my sous vide, so I'm gonna do this not unplugged, but go ahead and unplug it so you make sure you don't turn it on accidentally while your hand is in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look on the machine and you're gonna see there's an adjustment screw either right here or it's gonna be up here depending on the model you have. We're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and if you weren't touching the dime, that means you actually have to move the bowl closer to the thing. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust that screw. And you should do it starting with a quarter turn, but I know mine is way off. So I'm gonna, that would be a quarter of a turn. I'm gonna actually go about a little bit less than a half a turn around. We're gonna put it on there. We're gonna leave the dime in. We're gonna put our beater attachment back in, lift the bowl up, and now we're gonna look for the dime to slowly move as it goes around. So it's still not hitting. So now what we need to do is adjust it a little bit more. So we're gonna, again, take the beater out. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to, again, turn it counterclockwise and we're gonna go up to where it was a half a turn around. Put the beater back in, lift it up, make sure we're in the side groove. And now you can see the dime is slowly moving around. Now it's adjusted properly. So what we're gonna do, cause I was going online, I was gonna order a new whisk and I decided, let me go ahead and check the adjustment first. So now if I put my whisk in, it should hit the sides a little bit and be hitting the bottom. So now we can put our whisk in and now I can hear it actually hitting the metal. So hopefully I've saved you guys a little bit of money. Again, this is how you do it on the stand mixer that lifts up like mine. This is the Pro 600 six quart one. If you have the tilt one, I will leave a link down below in the description on how to adjust the tilt one. I also wanted to show you, I generally don't use this beater one. If you're making like a cake or something where you're not using the whisk, this is the beater that comes with it. Uh, I actually don't ever use this one. This one stays in the drawer and I literally only use it for that. I actually like this one better. I'll leave a link for it down. I got it on Amazon. It's the same exact size, but it's got these little silicone pieces. And what these do is, these actually wipe the side of the bowl because when you're using this beater, it never actually touches the side. So you have to constantly go in with a spatula and scrape down the sides. Whereas this, these little silicone nibs, they actually scrape the side and it makes it so that you don't have to keep pausing, going in with a, like a little rubber spatula and pushing stuff down. So this one is much better and they're very inexpensive. You can get them for like 13, 14 bucks online. Okay, so the Innova Precision Oven 
We're at, it's at 129 degrees because it does fluctuate just a touch. The probe is reading 127.9. So we're at 128 degrees internal temperature. Uh, according to the timer, we still have about five minutes to go. So we're gonna let this one keep going for five minutes because I wanna make sure the other one gets up the temperature. And then when the timer goes off, I'm gonna check the internal temperature on the other steak as well. Timer went off. We're gonna pull this out and we're gonna check the internal temperature. We're at 123 degrees. We're gonna put it back in for probably another 10 minutes to get it to 128. Now this steak is at 128.2. The sous vide's at 127.9, still running at 100%. So we're gonna let this one just keep going because it shouldn't go any higher because our probe temperature is set for 128 and the sous vide is set for 128. In the meantime, we're gonna start preparing our cast iron. So we're gonna sear this and that's one thing about a sous vide. You do need to, when you're done, dry it off and then sear it in a really hot pan. Otherwise it looks really ugly. So we've got a big cast iron, one that's gonna accommodate both steaks at the same exact time because we wanna make sure we drop them both in at the same time because if you do one and then the other, the temperature on the pan is going to lower down a little bit. And then when you're trying to rest it, we want to be able to rest everything all at the same exact time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I got a little bit in here. And I'm going to take some bacon grease and just kind of rub it in there. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to just rub it in just to make sure there's a little something in there to get hot. Now I'm going to just take my paper towel and wipe it. I don't want to have a whole bunch of grease in here, just enough for a coating to make sure nothing sticks to the pan. One of my problems is everybody likes to actually wash the pan, which you can see over here where some of the patina has come off. Okay, timer's up. We let it go in for another 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off and we're going to pull our steak out. We're going to go ahead and check the temperature. Open up the silicone bag. One thing I can guarantee you is no matter what appliance you're using, it's gonna come out looking kind of gross. So we're gonna bring this over here to these paper towels. So this is the sous vide steak out of the immersion blender, the not, immersion sous vide. Not super appetizing. Let's go ahead and check the internal temperature. So yeah, 127, we're right about 128. That's where we wanna be. Now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna turn this off. We got an internal temperature on the probe of 127, 128. We'll pull this one out. Let's connect the probe. We're gonna put this one on this other paper towel. Yep, still not appetizing looking. And let's check the internal temperature on this one. 126, 127, so we're right where we wanna be. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get our cast iron heating up while we season these steaks. So we have a little bit of bacon grease in here, just enough to have a slick surface. And we're gonna turn this puppy on high and get this thing super hot. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on the vent fan. Now while that is heating up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple of paper towels and we're gonna dry these steaks. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna touch a little bit of bacon grease on these. We don't need a lot. I just wanna get my seasoning to stick to it because they're like super dry now. Probably even put too much on this one, but just enough to get the seasoning on there. And again, do all of your sides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of this organic garlic pepper from Redmond because I really like this stuff. And we're just gonna really get a good coating on there. Go ahead and press it in, get it on our sides, all the way around. We're gonna go ahead and check the temperature of the pan. It is getting a nice smoke on there. So I have this Thermopro and I like this one because it's got a little infrared on the bottom. So we can go ahead and check the temperature and look, we're at about 475, 475 degrees on that. We're gonna actually let this go a little bit more. I'd like to get over 500. So. I think we're there and we can go ahead and get these things searing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in at the exact same time. Now, once again, this one here, that's the one from the immersion sous vide. This is the one from the precision oven. So precision oven is on the right hand side. You ready? Three, two, one. 
I like this kind of race. One of the things I don't like about doing this in the house is it can get smoky. We probably could have let this get even hotter if we wanted to, but I think we're good here. We're gonna go ahead and flip this over. Yeah, I wish I would have let it get a little bit hotter, but the idea is getting it at the same exact time. Now what I'm gonna start doing is we're gonna sear the edges. I'm gonna leave that there because I wanna make sure we have the right time. There we go. Okay, again, precision oven, immersion. We're gonna go ahead and put them on here. Let them rest for about five minutes. While we're doing that, we're gonna cook up a couple of eggs. These steaks really helped us out because you had the one that's like very square looking, you know that was the one that was in the oven. And this one that's like, round, you know, more pointy is the one that was in the uh, stick. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is check the doneness. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this one in half. This is the one out of the immersion. Looking there we good. Go. Now we're gonna check this one. Nice. Yeah, I would say it's about the same. So I would actually say this one is slightly more cooked. Oh, that's true, yeah, because it's like a, got a thicker cooked line. Yep, so maybe I left this one on, it's probably more of I left this one on the, you know, pan just a little bit more. More importantly, let's go ahead and check the internal temperature right there in the pink. Now it's been resting. So this is at 125 degrees and this one's at 124 degrees. So this one is slightly less in temperature. The reason I think it's more brown is I probably left this one on the cast iron more. Okay, so we've got each have one steak total and we've just got each have a half of each one. So the one on the right is gonna be the precision oven. The one on the left is the stick. Okay. So try not to get a bunch of fat, just try to get like mostly meat because that's what we're gonna check by. Which one are you going on? So this one is this. That one is going to be the precision oven. So I'm going to go ahead and try that first. Yeah, and so as I cut this now, it's, you can see it's got a lot more mm -hmm. cutting. It just depends on where, where I cooked it, hitting it on the pan. Mmm. I was kind of hungry. So, like, this is tasting really, really extra good. Mmm. That was good. Nice and tender all the way through. That is... Perfect cooking for me, medium rare. So now this is the stick one. Yep. We didn't dink it. Dink. Dink. I like them both. Is that weird? I think they both taste identical. <laughs> I don't notice a difference in taste at all. They're both perfectly cooked for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, there is absolutely no difference in taste. And even done this, again, if I look at the two of these, so this is the one from the stick. This is the one from the precision oven. This one has got a larger brown piece on the outside, but this steak is also thicker. Mm -hmm. So you can see there is a difference in the thickness of the steaks. So I probably should have seared this one a little bit less. If I was doing them... I would, the proper way to do this test was two completely separate, you know, pans and time it exactly where they each have the right amount of sear. But you have to but move it around. You gotta look at the internal temperature. Yeah. The internal temperature is the same on both of them. So which one tastes better? I think they're the one, both identical. The one with the most fat on it. Well, but that has nothing to do with that cooking. That has nothing method. to do with cooking method. So mm. the real question does this answer? is does the Anova Precision Oven actually sous the estate yes. without using a bag? Yes. And I'm going to say yes. And I prefer it. Do you know why? Because it's super easy. It's easy. I don't have to clean anything. I don't have to fill up a water bath. Mm -hmm. I don't have to pull out that big thing. I don't have to waste all that water in my big thing. And... It took 25 minutes less time. Mm. So there's that. 
prep stuff. It it preheated faster. Okay. So we, we started them both at the same time. The Inova Precision Oven was at temperature in like four minutes. Yeah. The water bath took 20 minutes. Then when we were done, the Inova Precision Oven continued to hold that temperature at 128 degrees. And we had to let the timer finish on the other one, five minutes. And then we had to continue cooking for like another 10 to 15 minutes until we got an internal temperature of 128 degrees on the stick one. I think that this is good news either way. Because if you... If you can't afford the Innova Precision Oven, you're you, going to get the same results exactly. with the American Exactly. You do not have to feel like you're missing out or getting less of a cook mm -hmm. because you have a stick one versus the Innova Oven. Yeah. The Innova Oven just does so much more. Because the Innova oven is going to replace your sous vide. It's going to replace your air fryer. Or at least re replace your toaster oven, convection oven. It's also a dehydrator. We cook in that almost all the time instead of the big oven because it preheats faster. It uses less energy than our giant oven over there. It doesn't heat up the room as much as our giant oven. So it really is a combi oven and I love it, but I understand it does take up a lot of counter space. It does. And it is an expensive appliance. For me, it was worth the $500 and we're going to do a full review of the Innova oven and everything yeah. you can do, but it was worth the $500 because we really enjoy sous vide steak. We really enjoy prime rib. We really enjoy rotisserie chicken and roast chicken. And it allows you to have perfect like restaurant quality without paying restaurant prices. And in my personal opinion, that oven, adding in the cost of the actual beef would really pay for itself in less than four trips that it would cost for us to go to, like going to Texas Roadhouse and each of us getting prime rib. Where I really like the oven versus the stick is not even in the initial cook. It has to do with the reheat feature for me. Mm -hmm. because usually when I'm reheating, I've already got it in the glass container. I don't want to transfer it to a stasher bag and then like, and start over again. I like the ease of just being able to put it right in its leftovers state in that glass container and set or it right hand. and set it right in there. Like I really like that. And if you don't have stasher bags, then I have to put it back into a plastic, maybe vacuum seal it yep. again. And that's like an extra step. So it's definitely a convenience thing. I think we've shown you don't need the oven in order to, to get the sous vide steak, but you're talking convenience and you're talking convenience of reheat. There's one other thing that the oven actually has over having the immersion. Okay. And again, this wasn't a whole big like sales pitch on the oven. No. I, I love it. I already own it. I purchased it with my own we money. They didn't give us the money. <laughs> um, but... The oven would actually allow you to eliminate the sear in a cast iron because the oh. oven has a sear feature. Yeah. So what we would normally do, and maybe we can show that in another video, we will sous vide a steak in there and then sear it in there. Because what you would do is pull it out at 128 degrees, you pump the oven up to top and back convection at 475 degrees, you put it back in there for literally like one to two minutes and now you get the sear and you don't have to smoke up your house and you don't have to dirty a cast like iron that. pan. So there is one more thing with that. In the meantime, anyway. I am going to enjoy the rest of this steak. By the way, we had some eggs with us from the girls in the backyard. Perfectly cooked with just that little bit of sauce. I think I cooked yours a little bit more. Thank you. Just for you. But the sauce makes a really good topper for the steak. It's been an interesting day, especially the trip to the chiropractor. I can't wait for my last trip where I may just tell him, oh, by the way, I heard your conversation. I honestly, that, that is my vote. I don't know what your vote is. Should, for... I, should I say that to him? Let me know down in the comment section. Should I go in on the next appointment? And hopefully this will be out by that day. I don't know yet. But let us know. Should I go in there and say, I'm just not interested in pursuing any more appointments with you? Or should I go in there and say, hey, I want to let you know the last time I came in here, um, I heard your conversation about upselling your, your patients 
And also, here's a lock that you might want to put on your front door and present them with an old lock. <laughs> no, I, I think that there's a sweet way to do it, but I actually think that we have the opportunity to be a blessing to him because at the end of the day, he's a small business. Always thinking positive. He is a small business. And you're shooting yourself in the foot if you're a small business and you're trying to get ahead or stay paddling, treading water by having like unscrupulous business practices. So I would say to him, hey, if you if this is how you want to do things, I would make sure that you are having meetings Not, way before work, yeah. lock that after. front door, and also don't discuss things in the office when you have a patient there because he was still talking. Nice. He was still talking about hard selling you to, you know, the secretary. The secretary in another room. So yep. what even when he was aware of you, yeah. he did not stop well, talking about that. The other thing is is I did hear him literally gave the same exact spiel where he was telling me uh, like every visit builds on another and I heard him tell the next patient Literally word for word. So it's almost like he's got a memorized script in his head. Right. It comes out like that though. I hate to be hard on people, but you know, I, I am a little cautious when it comes to, you know, standard American medicine. Yeah. Um, and it just made confirmations for me and I don't want to have those confirmations because I know not everybody is like that. No, it's not. It, but it does make you leery of like medical stuff. And he caught us in a vulnerable position that when I, you're in pain, that I think a lot of people aren't, and I think that that's why a lot of people get kind of talked into some needless surgeries. Yep. It's because you have me in the moment when I'm in pain, and you're telling me that this is so severe, you have to do what I'm telling you to do because it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, and I'm the only route to healthcare. I'm the only salvation you got there is no other way except for this physician's desk reference and this surgical you know route that that this is the prescribed way of handling this but we keto yeah we know that there are well, alternatives dr barry talked about that in kentucky at keto palooza in 2021 when he was talking about you know, having your gallbladder removed. And he said, there are a lot of gallbladders in this country that are removed needlessly. Yeah. Where the problem could have been fixed by adding fat into your diet. That it's a muscle that's gone into atrophy and it could have been fixed. But the simple solution, the, the textbook solution is cut it out. But we're permanently destroying our body instead of trying to fix it. And so I appreciate everybody who sent us messages. Hey, yeah. You know, do some physical therapy. Hey, work at home. I already made though. the decision before going in there today. And hearing today was a confirmation that I was making the right decision. But we really appreciate all you guys for caring about us so much. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we have steak for dinner, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.